Let's open it in prayer this evening. Heavenly Father, we just come before you in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, who now leads us and guides us into all truth. Thank you, Father, Holy Spirit, that you guide us this evening, that we hear your word and that we become doers of your word, Father, that we are building our lives on that, that good foundation, that foundation that, that's founded on the rock, Father. We want to be like the wise man who built his house on the rock. And when the storms and floods came, Father, it stayed uh, firm uh, after the storms and survived, Father, like, like your word promises to us. And Father, we thank you that we are wise in, in the things of the kingdom of God, and we give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. So last Wednesday, I started uh, doing the Wednesday evening Bible study. And we uh, started uh, talking about take heed how you build. And we, we looked in, uh, in the scripture. We'll just go back and do just a little review. Uh, last time we started in Luke 6, 46, and that's where Jesus said, you know, whoever comes to me, hears my sayings, is like the, the wise man who built his house on the rock. And the floods came and the streams rose and it did not move because it was founded on the rock. But he says, he who heard and did nothing, that, that uh, house did not stand and, and the ruin of that house was great. So we want to be wise, right? We want to be wise how we build. And then we, then we went to uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 9. And this is kind of what we're teaching us. So we'll read this here. In 1 Corinthians 3, 9, Paul says this. He said, so for we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will it declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved yet so as through fire." And then he finishes up in verse 16. He says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. So here we looked at a couple things. Uh, Paul, first of all, he says, take, take heed how you build. So we need to, we talked about a plan, having a plan, because we need to have God's plan. We can't just build whatever we want to build. He says, you got to be careful in what you build. He says, I, I was a wise, uh, what do you say, a wise uh, master builder, and he laid the foundation. He went and preached Jesus. We, you and I believed, we heard that, and we received the foundation of Christ. But that's not where, that's not where our uh, salvation stops, right? It isn't, we don't just get saved and then, you know, wait for heaven, you know, God's, here Paul tells us, we got to take heed to how we build. Like I've said before, just because you have a foundation doesn't mean you have a house. You have a foundation, but he says you got to now start build, you got to build the first floor, if there's a second floor and a third floor, and you've got to just take heed how you build. So getting saved was the first step, but now it tells us in Philippians, uh, the Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, right? So we talked about take heed how we, how we build. And then he talked about building material. He talked about what, what is used in this building. He talked about gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw. He says that whatever m material we use is going to be tested. And if it endures, you know, uh, that'll be great. And if not, the, the fire is going to reveal each one's work of what sort it is. And then he talked about uh, if anyone's uh, work endures, 
um, he will receive reward. So endure talks about construct quality of construction, the way something was put together. If it's put together with care, you know, and it's done right, it's going to last, right? There's, we talked about there's houses today that have lasted hundreds of years. And we've seen houses that are built and don't last 100 years, right? They, we've seen, we talked about, we've seen bridges fail. We've seen houses fail here recently. And a lot of it can go back to the, the material that was used and the quality of construction and the way it was built. It can all be usually traced back to that. So we looked at those things. Uh, and then we, we, we took a look at uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.21, talking about that we are, we are a spirit, we have a soul, and we, have a, we live in a body, right? The soul is mind, will, and emotion. And, uh, and uh, emotions, mind, will, and our emotions. At the time of our salvation, our spirit was, the construction, it's totally been, it's done. Whatever needed to be done in our spirit was done. But the soul and body are still under construction. They're still in the process and will be in the process of being uh, built uh, to the way God wants it until Jesus comes back. We're going we're gonna to always be striving and getting things right with our, with our soul and with our body until Jesus comes back. But God, we talked about how God has empowered you and I to make those changes. So we don't just get saved and, you know, and, and then sit back in our easy chair and say, you know, here I am, God, you know, now you can do your work on me. Well, Jesus did his work in our spirit, and now he expects to take what he's put in our spirit, that new life, and use it to change our soul and change our body so that it glorifies him, right? We talked about in John 7, 37, Jesus said um, that in our heart, out of our heart will flow rivers of living water. So in, in our spirit now, there's a river of living water. But in order for that to benefit you and I, that water must flow up through our spirit into our soul and into our body to be of any benefit so that we can uh, glorify God in our spirit, soul, and body. So that we should walk, the Bible talks about walking in newness of life. We have, we have a new man on the inside of us, but in order for, that doesn't mean you automatically walk in this new life. We talked about last time, there's a lot of people that are saved and born again, and yet what was done in their spirit, that, that life that was put there, that river of living water, it's just, it's just residing there and not benefiting them in their life. We, you and I need that, that, that river of life. We need God's power working in our lives so that it uh, transforms our marriages, our families, our, our jobs, right? And all those things, we need that working in our lives. We talked about uh, being perfectly joined together. Remember, I, brought, I didn't bring them this time, but we brought, I had some blocks, right? And we talked about how there's, we, have, we are a spirit, soul, and body. In order for, for that life to benefit, our soul, our soul, our spirit, soul, and body need to be joined together. It's really, it's talking about uh, the church body that you and I need to be perfectly joined together to function. But it all starts, if we ourselves aren't put together right, then we're not going to be a benefit in the church, right? So the building, the building process, you know, we're, we're working at church, but it's, it starts in our own lives, right? That's where we need to start the work, right? If, that, if things are out of order, if things aren't joined together right, then we won't be of any benefit at church, right? We might cause more harm than good, right? We've known people like that. None of, nobody in Jubilee Church. But, it, you know, that, that, that can happen, right, until they finally get to a place. So, yeah, God wants us joined, our spirit, soul, and body joined together uh, so that the life that's in us can flow up, again, into our soul, into our body, and bring life to our soul and body so that we can benefit from it. If spirit, soul, and body are out of line, then then it's, it's difficult to walk in newness of life. Years ago, we went on, uh, we were, we were uh, on vacation out in Colorado, and we took a horse ride, you know, Carl and I and the kids were small, 
and you know, not, we're not good ho horse riders, but you know, you know, they were pack pack horses, right? You know, and usually those horses, you know, they just they just get in a line and follow, right? Yeah. Well, the the horse I happened to get on, you know, it, it did not want to walk where it's supposed to, so you know. It comes up besides the other horses, you know, and the and the wrangler looks looks behind him. Says he said, "Get your horse in line," you know. And, the, and I'm not, you know, so I'm trying to get this horse. He's not going. He's not going to go back in line. So I just kind of have to let him be where he is. He's he's the same horse that didn't like me riding him. So every tree went around. He tried to rub me off, you know. <laughs> he was kind of a naughty horse. It just wasn't me. But he didn't. He wouldn't stay in line, you know. But the same way, if we're not in line, the things aren't going to work right. Uh, we talked about uh, the, we need a plan, right? The first, the first thing that happens in any building project is you need a good plan. It takes, you know, a lot of people don't like to take the time to do that. Caleb's kind of that way, you know. When I'm going to build something, I'll sit down and, and I just pencil things out, right? But now Caleb's not that way. He'll just come and he, I, I, I guess he has it all in his head, you know, and he just starts building. But, you know, I've got to put some basic things down at least of where, what it's going to look like and where I'm going to go. And maybe, you're, maybe you don't need a plan, but it's good always to have a plan. You can go back, okay, what's, what am I's next step? Because it gives us step, steps to accomplish the building and get it to look like what it's supposed to look like and function the way it's supposed to function, right? So it's good to have a, a good plan. And in Jeremiah 29, 11, God has the plan, right? He says to, uh, he says, for I know the plans that I have to you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So God has the plan. You and I don't have the plan. The Bible tells us it's not within man to direct his own steps. We don't have, we don't know how, how our life's supposed to end up. We don't know where to start and where to finish, but God does. So we, we go to him. We talked about Moses in Exodus, and it says, and let them make me a sanctuary, Exodus 25, 8. It says, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. According to all that I show you, that is the pattern of the tabernacle, in the pattern of all his furnishings, just as you shall make it. So God gave the Israelites a plan, right? They couldn't just say, well, we'll handle this, God, and we'll just come up. Uh, we hope we like what you build, you know, and you're pleased with this. No, God didn't leave it up to them. He gave them the plan, and, it, you know, you can read it. It's very specific of what they had to build. And so God's very specific how he wants to build. That's why uh, Paul said, take heed how you build. Listen carefully. Follow the instructions. And it'll go well with you, right? And if not, it's things aren't God's. Everything that God wants to do with your life and through your life probably will not be very effective if we don't follow His plan. Psalms 127:1: Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. So here it tells we, we got to let God be the one that directs us. He's the one that that has the plan. And that he's now, the Bible tells us in Philippians, he's working in us to will and to do of his good pleasure. So he's in the Holy Spirit's been placed on the inside of us to lead us and guide us through this plan so that it gets carried out right. So we're being, we're being built in Ephesians 2.22, in whom also you are being built to get together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. So the Bible, we, we talked about that we were the temple of God. And so God wants to dwell among you and I, right? He wants to live on the inside of us. That's the plan. So that he doesn't, people don't have to come to a church to get saved. So that God's on the inside of us. And if we build our house well, then we can go to them and they can hear the good news. We can be the uh, wise master builder like Paul was and lay the foundation, right? And then teach them how to build on that foundation. So in Ephesians 5.14, this is what we're kind of start new here now tonight. In Ephesians 5.14, he says, Therefore, he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. 
See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dispensation, dispensation, but be filled with the Spirit. So he says, now we're supposed to, now that we've been born again, he says, wake, you know, wake up and raise up from the dead, right? We were dead, but now we've been saved, and now we've been made alive, right? He says, now that we walk circumspectly, and that word means carefully. Now we're not just, you know, uh, going about our, our own business and doing our own thing. Now God has placed us in his plan and saved us, and he's got plans and uh, calls on our lives, right? So he says, walk carefully, not as fools. Don't be a fool. A fool just does, you know, whatever, whatever the, the day brings, that's just kind of what they just wait to see what happens, right? Well, we, we've got to take, it says we need to redeem the time. We wasted enough time being unsaved, and now we only have, and now either until we die or the Lord comes back to get this plan and this house built, right? We don't have it for eternity, right? There's a time. So he says, you know, let's redeem the, re redeem the time. Let's make good use of what we have and get, get to work, you know, and start to build this, build this house. Don't be unwise. He says, understand what the will of the Lord is. You can't, you know, just think, well, I, I think this is what God want, would want me to do. I hope this is what he would be pleased. No, we, we get, what do we do? We get into the word and we read and we find out what God's plan is and how we need, what we, steps we need to do to accomplish that, right? We walk circumspectly, carefully, following his plan. Don't be drunk, but be filled with the Spirit. Now we've been filled with that Spirit, so our, our soul and body now need to be filled with that so that this plan can be carried out. 2 Corinthians 3.17. Still talking about the plan here. It says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So now we have the Spirit of the Lord in us. And where it says where that Spirit is, there's liberty. Jesus came to set us free, didn't he? And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So we've been set free in our spirit. But we need now to set, set our minds free from the way this world thinks and the way we thought. We need to set our bodies free from the way we used to live and the way we used to talk, right? So he says there's, there's, there, God has put his image on the inside of us. And now through the word, we can see who we are and what we look like, right? That It talks about uh, being... It talks about uh, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. God's glory, God's image is on the inside of us. What he looks like, how he acts, how he talks, how he lives. And so we're looking at that, and now we're, we're using that to transform our soul and our body into that same image. And it says, just by the, as by the Spirit of the Lord. That's what the Spirit of God is in, on the inside of us at work to do, to transform us to renew us, to bring this river of life from our spirit up into our body so that our whole spirit and soul and body are filled with the fullness of God, right? Liberate means to release from slavery or enemy occupation. Even after people get saved, they're still, sometimes they come with a lot of bondage, don't they? There's habits that they're, you know, they're bound to and, things like that. So, and some of those, you know, go away instantly. Some of you were born again and, and habits, bad habits just kind of dropped away. Other people, it's a process, right? That they renew their minds and those wrong way of living, like smoking or drinking, those kind of things, or, or alcohol uh, use, you know, abuse or drug or, abuse. Or just wrong ways of thinking. Not and all those things, right. And, exactly. And once they get saved, they are, which is like a huge. Right. 
But yeah, like I said, the, the spirit's been changed, but the body and soul are under construction. They're being liberated. They're being set free as we take heed and build this new house, right? As we use the, uh, as we use the right materials, as we do quality work on our house, right? Liberty means freedom from slavery, captivity, captivity, or any other form of arbitrary control. So we've been set free, and we're setting ourselves free. So if you'll allow the Spirit of God into your soul and body, He can liberate your mind and free it from thinking like the world. It can free it from fear, right? Free it from shame and guilt. We can be led free from uh, being led by our feelings rather, and being led now being led by the Spirit of God. Before we got saved, we were led by our feelings, right? Whatever we've, our body felt like, that's what controls us, most of us, right? And God doesn't want it to be that way anymore. Jesus has set us free, and he wants us to live the life he died to give us. Free from poverty, free from sickness, free from all those things that, have, that are holding people in bondage today, right? Free from the fear of death, right? And if we take heed to his word to build, we can, we can not only be set free in our spirit, but set free in our lives. So we talked about, you know, the wise man uh, in Matthew uh, 7, 24, somebody that comes to Jesus, hears these sayings, and build his house on the rock. It talks about the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. So I believe God, I, in fact, I know God is trying to get us to a place that if we will take heed to his word and build our lives in accordance with his word, that our lives lived by faith will be like the man, like the wise man who built his house on the rock. The storms will come, but because we, we have built our house on the rock, we won't fall, right? Storm, and, you know, storms are going to happen. Things are going to happen to you and I. In fact, in Psalms 37 and 19, it, it says this. It says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. So you and I are going to, you know, we're just going to go through those things, right? But if you've, if you've built the right house, you can weather the storms, right? You just kind of, you go into the shelter, right, into your house, uh, and you just wait for the storm to pass, and you come out and go about your business. But if you haven't built your house right, if you're like the person that built on the sand, when the storms come, the floods come, and the house falls, and great was its fall, it says. And they're just kind of, people like that are just living from one crisis to the next, just trying to hold on and get by. And God didn't intend our lives to be that way, did he? Storms will come, things will happen, but we, we just weather the storm right because he's going to deliver them out of us, out of every one of them. So we're not supposed to live our lives from one, one storm to another, and yet a lot of people do, right? It's just kind of, oh, I don't know what's going to happen next. You know, we got, just got through that, you know, just barely made it, but I, you know, we'll see what happens next, but so we're not supposed to live our lives from one storm to another, just trying to, to survive, but from faith to faith and from glory to glory, right? Our faith walk becomes a testimony to the goodness and faithfulness of God. We just, you know, just keep on walking, right? Storms come, things happen, but we don't, we don't lose hope. We don't you know, fall apart like uh, Pastor Emma like a $2 suitcase, but we stay, we stay held together, right? Because our hope isn't in you and I and, and what we can do to change the world. Our hope's in God. And he's changed us and put power in us to change the world around us, right? James 1.25 It says, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forget, forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he 
does. So right before this, he talks about, you know, don't deceive yourself by just hearing the word, but not doing it. But then he finally goes on there. So here he, he calls the, the, law, the word now the perfect law of liberty. What's in that Bible is going to set our soul and body free, right? If we will be doers of the work. Again, building is work, right? If you've never built something or especially like a house, you know, taking something on that lasts more than a week to build, right? It, you know, day after day, like Noah and, the, and when they built the, the, the temple for God, it took, there was a process and it, they wouldn't have called it, well, this is just fun. No, it was, it was work, right? Doing God's word is work, right? But there is a benefit, right? Amen. He says, because if you'll be a doer of the word, if you'll continue to look in it and be not a, and be, don't, don't be a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. God's trying to get us to a place that we will build our lives uh, with the word of God and that we're going to be blessed no matter what happens. If our house falls down and a tornado takes it away, we're still blessed, right? You cannot take blessings away. You can take things away. You can take cars away. You can take, you know, houses. You can take jobs away. But if God is blessing your life, you're going to get it all back, right? Just like with Job. It says, have you seen the end intended by the Lord? Job went through a lot, right? But at the end of the, when that was all over, right? God blessed Job, right? And what was taken away, he got more back, right? So God's trying to get us to a place that we're not going from storm to storm. We're not, you know, wondering about what's going to happen next. But we're a doer of the work, and now we're just, because of that, God's blessing us. In everything we do, it's prospering, right? That's where he wants us to be. Proverbs 10, 22. The blessings of the Lord make one rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. You know, the things of this world, they can, you know, if you can buy things you can't afford, you can get yourself in a house that's too big and those kind of things, and it may look like you're blessed, but sometimes that comes with a cost, right? But God, it says God's blessings make one rich, and there's no, he doesn't add any sorrow with it. If God's blessing you, he's going to make it right, and he's going to bless you the right way, right? He's not going to put you in a place where it's going to cost you, but his, his blessings just continue to flow until you're overflowing with blessings, right? He opens up the windows of heaven, heaven right, and fills us with, with uh, his blessings, so God has set it up that we should not have to live our lives believing, believing God from one miracle after another. And it's okay to believe God for miracles, right? But that's not the way we should live. We shouldn't have to live, you know, well, I need a miracle this week. Somebody's got to make my house payment or, you know, I need, to, I need to pay the doctor's bill and just, you know, believe in week after week, month after month, going for one. And it's, God doesn't intend it to be that way. Miracles are fine, right, if you need one. But there is a better way. We can be doers of the word and we can be blessed in whatever we do, right? That's what, he, that's what he intended. If we will build our house right and live and walk by faith, we will continue to be blessed in what we do. It'll just continue. Uh, things will happen, yes. Cars might break down. Cars might, you know, we might lose a car or, or our house might get, get damaged. but we're blessed, right? If not built right, a house begins to have problems. You know, some of you have lived in maybe a fixer-upper, right? You bought a house and it came with, it's uh, had a number of problems when you moved in, right? I mean, anybody built, bought a house like that or ever lived in a house? And, you know, it's, when a house has problems, they don't fix themselves, Right? Usually it just kind of compounds and what was a problem now goes into the next room and into the ne goes into the heating and the, you know, all those things and it just ends up being quite costly, right? So if a house isn't built right, it begins to have problems and it stays in a continual state of needing repairs from one problem to the next, right? And that's kind of how a lot of Christians are. 
They're just, they, they've never taken the time to do what God said to get themselves in a position where they're blessed. And so they're just, they're kind of halfway there and halfway not, and they're just problems, right? Because they never got the work finished or never began or never uh, got, it, got those things done. So this month, you might have plumbing problems. Last month, I had heating problems, right? And et cetera, et cetera, and on it goes, right? We end up living in a fixer-upper, always going from one problem to the next. And God doesn't want our lives to be that way. Again, we'll have problems from time to time. But he delivers, some, delivers, some, delivers us out of them all. Amen. Like our physical house, our lives can be the same way. If we have heard his word but not used them to shape our lives, we can have relationship problems, marriage problems, family problems, work problems, church problems, right? Those all those things, and we can just kind of be in a just continual state because we haven't, you know, build our house right and fix the problems. We're just living that same old life, right? Take, again, t remember Paul said, take heed how he builds. The, the Amplified Bible says, says in James 1.25, it says this. It says, but he who looks carefully into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and faithfully abides by it, not having become a careless listener who forgets, but an active doer who obeys, he will be blessed and favored by God in what he does in his life of obedience. That's the Amplified. In 1 Thessalonians 1, 2, it talks about a work of faith and a labor of love. Again, it takes, it takes work to do what God wants to do. It's, it's, you, know, you wouldn't say it's easy. You know, fight, the Bible tells us to fight the good fight of faith. We're, we're in a fight. The devil's, you know, he's trying to pers dissuade us from getting the work done and just let our old life. It's, it's easier to live our old life than to build a new one, isn't it? Because those, all those things just came natural. It's just like a garden. Um, you know, this spring we, we uh, tilled our garden, cleaned it all up, you know, and, and planted things. And a couple of the rows... Uh, Nothing came up, but I'll tell you what, there's grass and weeds that have come up, and we didn't do anything to bring them. You know, and they just, without any effort, that ground produced grass and weeds. What we put in it, I don't know, for some reason, didn't come up, you know. But so we spent, was it the other night, uh, pulling weeds, right? And my back of my legs felled it when I came in. But we got the weeds pulled, and now we just have to, we have to maintain it, right? We're going to have to go back. That's part of we got to pull out the weeds that are in our life, right, and plant the right things in our lives, right? Plant the God's Word, the seed. So, um, work of faith, labor of love. Hebrews 4, chapter 1. It says this. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let, it le let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the, word, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who, we who have believed do enter that rest, as he has said, so I swore my wrath. They shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. God wants our new life to be effective and, have, and be profitable. But because they heard and didn't do what the words told them to do, it didn't profit them. And again, there's a lot of people that have been born again, have been saved, and that salvation is not profiting their lives right. It's not affecting anything. They still remain same, talking the same way, uh, thinking the same way, and living the same way. So many, many have received this new life, 
but not all will profit what has been given them. In uh, Joshua 1.8, God wants us to, to enter into his rest. If you, get, if you get your house built, you can walk in the door and rest, right? If we'll do what God's word tells us to do, we can rest and just be blessed, right? And rest in his faithfulness. God, I've done what your word said me to do. I'm going through some problems right now, but I'm resting in your faithfulness that you're going to deliver me out of every one of them, right? That's where he wants us to be, resting in him, right? Not in us, but in him, in, in the work that, that he's done in our lives. Joshua 1.8, we all could quote this. He tells Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So to, so to get the success and to be prosperous, there's something, there's some work we have to do. We have to meditate day and night in God's word, and then we have to be a doer of that work, right? As James told us. If we have done and are doing what the word tells us, we can rest assured that God's is blessing our lives, right? I'm just, you know, yeah, there's some things still happening, but you just sit back and you just rest. You take shelter in him, right? And the storm's going to, that's going to pass over and you're going to, your house is going to stay standing, right? It may not be fun, but we just rest in him, right? That's when a storm comes, that's what we do. We, you, you go into your house and take shelter, right? God is our shelter, right? He told, he told Abraham, I am your, I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. He's the same for you and I. He's making our lives prosperous and success, successful in our walk. We sing that song, in our walk, in our talk. I've got him all over me, right? There's that song we sing, right? So God wants to get all over us, in us, right? Not just in our spirit, but in our, in our walk, in our talk, in our lives, right? God wants us to be in a place that we are not trying to get God to bless us, but that we have built our house according to the word of God and positioned ourselves to walk and live in his blessings. So we, don't have, we, we shouldn't have to work to get God to bless us. God, are you happy the way I did this? You know, are you pleased with me now? Will you please bless me? You know, can I get what I've asked for? It doesn't have to be that way, right? If we just be a doer of the work, it puts us, positions us, in the blessing. So we're not begging God to do this and begging God to do that. We're in the blessings and he's just pouring the blessings upon our lives, right? Big difference. So we have positioned ourselves to walk and live in his blessings because we have become doers and not just hearers of his word. Now we are resting in his faithfulness to do what he has spoken, what he has promised in his word. We just we, we've done what we are part. We've, done, we've heard the word. We've done the word. And now we just trust him, rest in him, that he's faithful to do what he's promised to do, right? That's where he wants us. So that we can get to a place that we aren't always building, always trying to get God to do this or that. But we've done the work, and then we just rest. Rest in him. We are not laboring to be prosperous. We're not working to be healed. But by becoming a doer of the word, he has, it has profited us, right? It didn't profit those in the Old Testament, right? They heard, but they didn't do. But we're going to be hearers and doers, and it's going to profit us to where our lives are being blessed by the Lord. Amen? Psalms 37, 3. The scriptures minister to me a lot of times. And, it's, and it says, verse 3, it says, Trust in the Lord and do good. But before this, it talks about how there's, there's evil people in this world and they're you know, trying to make you fall and do bad things to you. But, but God says, don't, don't, in fact, he says, don't fret about it. Don't worry about what people are trying to do to you or what the world, you know, what, what you're up against. He says, don't fret about it. Don't worry about it. 
He tells you, here's the work you need to do. He says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait, wait patiently for him. So yeah, we're, we're, we're going through some things, right? And it doesn't always look good, but it tells us what to do. Don't worry about what's going on in the world, what's going on you know, around you. He says, you just trust in the Lord and do good. Keep doing what, what my word tells you to do. Don't get bitter. Don't get angry. Don't, don't get an unforgiveness because somebody's done you wrong, right? But just do good. Bless them, right? That's what the Bible tells us. Bless those that, uh, you know, that have not treated us right but we just continue to do what his word says. And he says, it's gonna, he's going to bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. What these people were doing to try to, what the world and people are trying to do to destroy you, God's going to turn it around, right? Turn it around for you and I, because we're blessed and we're walking in those blessings. Amen? We sing that song, God says, yes, and I know that I'm blessed, right? We could sing that. Because, you know, we have the blessings of God are just in our lives, right? How's it go? God says, yes, and I know that I'm blessed. Uh, what, how does it go? Yes, God's All God's rest. promises are yes and amen. What? Got a soul that's at rest. Got a soul that's at rest because God says that I'm blessed, right? And we are. That's, you know, we're just, we're just resting because we've done, we've built our house and done what he's asked us to do. A house built properly and maintained will be a house that will shelter us and protect us from the elements of this world. If we build our house using God's plan, we will be blessed. And we can say of the Lord, as it says in Psalms 91, the Lord is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Right? We had a neighbor... Uh, that lived by us, that was before we ever had kids, uh, that, that the wife, she was terrified of storms. And they had, a, they had a child, and this fear had began to affect their child. Whenever, you know, there'd be some clouds would come up, I mean, she would just go into, a, um, I don't know, just an uncontrollable fret, right? It was just, it was ungodly what, what was happening to her. And she just would panic, and her husband, he was just beyond, he didn't know what to do, right, because she was so panicked, and now this fear had been transferred over their child, so when he saw these things, and he was just a little guy, right, and yet now he was starting to live that way. We, you know, a house, and, and yet they had a good house, but, I mean, just this fear would overcome her. We don't have to live our lives that way, right? God set us free, right, and protects us. If we follow his instruction and build our house and our lives in line with his word, I believe we would find ourselves praying and believing less about finances, about health issues, about all those things that a lot of people spend a lot of time praying for. And I'm not saying you shouldn't pray for those, but if you're walking in the blessings, God knows what you have needed before we even ask, right? And he's... He, the, the, we sing that song, the blessings of God or uh, the goodness of God are, are chasing, how's it go? Or what, how's it go? We just sang it Sunday. Or uh, what's running after. running after me, right? God is trying to bless us, right? And they're just, they're chasing us, right? We, but we, like it says, we've uh, submitted our lives to him and now the blessings are just running after us, right? So we, we could spend a lot less time of, of all those things we need, and God has just, we've positioned ourselves that we're just receiving blessings of God. We're, we're, we're prosperous. We're uh, in health, and all those things are, are being, are in our lives are being blessed by God. Amen? So finally, now the tools. 
I talked about, when I left this last time, we said we'd talk about the tools, and I got a bucket of tools up here. So we've got about just a few minutes. We'll see what we can, tools we can look at here. So we talked about having the, the plan, right? Uh, remember Paul said, take heed how we build. We're talking about, Paul says, uh, you're, a, you're God's uh, field, you're God's building. He says now he laid the foundation, but now he wants us to build on this foundation. The first thing you need to do is buy good tools. And if you have a good wife, she won't mind you spend a lot of money on good tools. Right, Roger? You know, whatever it takes to just go out and, you know, here's the checkbook. Here's the thing. Just go buy whatever you need. And good tools are not cheap. That's when I knew Caleb's first girlfriend wasn't going to last. She, yes. Yeah, she, she bought him some cheap tools. <laughs> and it didn't last. But you know, when I, when I uh, back when we were first married and I started to build, I didn't have a lot of money, so I bought a lot of cheap tools. You know, there was a, and I'm not knocking Sears tools, but you know, that's just kind of where everybody back in the day, that's where you bought your tools from Sears. But Sears tools are okay for once in a while, right? But they're not intended for industrial use, right? They're not intended to build your house with. And I ruined many a project using uh, Sears tools, right? They'd fall apart, you know, and wreck my project and wouldn't make me very happy, right? And finally, I got to the point where if I want to build anything half decent, I'm going to have to buy some decent tools, right? So, and tools are expensive. But, you know, buy, some, buy good tools, your wife won't mind, right? Just tell her that you need them, right? Yep, I'm gonna, this is going to help our fix our house, all those problems. You're going to see them disappear, right? <laughs> Let me get this saw. Let me get this screw gun, this hammer, you know, the nail gun, and all these things. Anthony's looking at Amapha. He must be work, wanting some tools, I would guess. <laughs> oh, see, tools. Tools, we need them. <laughs> exactly. So what, what we did get to, to accomplish this plan is we got the gift of the Holy Spirit, didn't we? That's the most, it's, he's not a tool, but he is a, uh, somebody that we're going to rely on heavily, right? We're going to rely on the, the Holy Spirit. And in and, and, uh, John 16, 13, Jesus says this. He says, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. Helper. The helper. Yes, in one place it's called the helper, right? Uh, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me. He will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. So he becomes our guide, our helper, our comforter, when we don't know what to do and we're just kind of at a loss, we sit down and, you know, he comforts us. Okay, the plan's not working right now. Take, you know, I, but I have the plan. It's not working right now, but take a deep breath. That's what Caleb always tells. Uh, Hud was pitching the other night at, at his game. And he, he was getting flustered, you know. At their age, it's hard. To, about every fifth one is a strike, right? Most of them are bouncing across the plate. And, you know, so most of them are behind the batter on the wrong side of the batter. But that's just kind of the way it is. So he says, Hud, take a deep breath, you know, he says. And slow down because, you know, calm down and just, you know, follow through with your throw and throw it. So he did that, and then he started doing better. It wasn't that everyone was a strike. But he was, you know, getting him in that general direction, right? So, you know, he comforts us, right? So he's going to guide us into all truth. And he's, he has the plan, and he's, he's, he's been given to us to help carry it out, to carry out that plan. So a framing square. Everybody know what that is or what it's used for? Some people do, some people don't. So it, when, if you're framing a house, this is a very important tool to have, that things are built square, that they're built right. Uh, and what it, it does, it, it, it makes sure that everything 
is square and true. I'm going to I'll pass out uh, a little square. And uh, this board, there's two sides are square and two are not. So I'm going to give you this, this square, and you test it. I, I'll, I'm going to give you a little hint. One side of this board, the long, one of the long sides, there's something wrong with it. So check, you know, use the square and see if you can, and, and see how, if you can tell. It, to you, to most of us, it looks square, doesn't it? Just to look at it. But you can't always tell by looks. So pass that around, you know, and put, what you do is you hold it on there like this, and you shouldn't see any light. It should fit perfectly on there. If there's a gap, then something's not square, right? It makes the rest of the building difficult. <laughs> if things aren't started square in a building, you're going to have problems the rest of the house. And let's talk about, um, I'm getting ahead of myself now. Where was that? Okay, here we are down here. So we're talking about framing square. Let's take Hebrews 11.3. Everybody knows this one probably. Hebrews 11 and verse 3. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So God used his word to frame out this world, to get it just the way he wanted it. The same thing is going to be true of our lives. God's words are, are a frame that we use to get our lives perfectly square and aligned with God, right? We talk about to be perfectly joined together so that our whole spirit, soul, and body can be in line so that that life that's in us can flow out of our spirit up into our soul and out into our body. Without a framing square, you can't just go, well, that looks good to me. You know, a lot of times if you, if you uh, want to put a board up that's perfectly level, and we're going to talk about a level too, that kind of goes along with a, with a square, a level is something you put on, if you're, if you're uh, setting a board up or want to have a, a flat floor on your, found in your if you're laying the floor, you want to put a level on it. And when it's in between those two bubbles, then it's perfectly level. Same way if you're, if you're putting up a wall, you, know, you might say, well, how's that look? And you kind of stand back, you know, and you kind of go like this. If you don't use a level, if you just use your eye, it can be off by inches. There's, if, you would, if you'd probably go and take this level and check walls in this church, you'd find a lot of them that you, it looks square, but it's not. When Roger and I built that little stub wall in the basement, we were surprised how the wall we built to was, it was way out of level, right? So again, there's a, a level. And those are tools that uh, when you're framing a house or building a house, they're very important tools. They're going to help you get started right and make sure you stay right, right? In Luke chapter 3 and verse 4, so it says, and as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, Make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain shall be brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough ways smooth. So that's what God's word helps us to do, right? We don't just, you know, we just don't hope, well, I hope this is what God wanted. I hope this is, a, you know, I've, I've gotten my life, you know, the, crook, the creaks and crooks out of it, right? The twists and turns. We, don't, we just don't assume, we use God's word and we lay that word up against our life and we see, is it level? Is it square? Am I in line with God's word or am I still unsquare? And we have to bring, God's word doesn't change. It is always telling us what's true. It's, you never have to wonder, is it is, did God's word? Is it not square? Is it not true? No, it always is, isn't it? His word's forever been settled in heaven, right? It'll never change. Will heaven and earth pass away? 
my words will not fail, right? Not pass away. We can, I guess we can pass this around too. I don't know why I've got it here. If you want to take a look at it, whoever wants to. Um, so if we're going to make, his, make our lives straight, get the crooked places uh, straight, get the valleys filled level and the hills cut down low, it's going to take God's word. Back when I was in high school, uh, my dad had a construction business, and we uh, it was a dirt moving business. We built terraces, we built dams, and back in the, would have been the, probably the late 70s and 80s, we leveled a lot of land. That was before pivot irrigation. So what they would do, people would, they had land and they wanted to irrigate it, so the only thing to do back then is that you had to take the hills out and you had to make it from one end to the other so that water would flow. And it, I mean, sometimes there were eight foot cuts and eight foot fills. Back then, they never thought anything about it. I mean, that's, that's huge. You'd, you'd do a, you know, a, a half section and you'd spend all this time and energy because they wanted to irrigate this. So my brother and I, uh, we started working for my dad. And at that time, my dad was on a, worked with a different, kind of a different crew, and we had moved up, and we were with uh, the land leveling crew. And the, there was a, uh, Herb was his name, and he was an old German. Quick, quick temper, man. He could, you know, get mad at you in a minute. So he'd see, you know, we'd be, we didn't know a lot back then. You know, we just, were, we were pretty green, right? We were, we were running a scraper, but we weren't sure what we were doing. We were, we were hauling dirt from point A and filling it in point B, right? So a couple of times we were doing the wrong thing, and he ran the dozer, the bulldozer, right? He he there was more than once he hopped down off of that off of that uh, dozer, and we'd be in our scrapers, and he'd start throwing dirt clods at us because <laughs> we were doing something wrong. And sometimes, sometimes we were we were, didn't realize that our scraper was full. We were just going, and just dirt was just flying out of, you know, and, and he stopped us and he stepped off, you know, how many feet we'd went past. And he said, that's a waste of fuel all this time, you know. So you true. learned in a hurry that to stay out of, out of trouble, you tried to do what Herb said. <laughs> so anyway, when you're, when you're leveling land, they, they lay out the field in 100-foot, uh, what do I say, sections. There's, so every, every 100 feet going in, in quadrants, what, is that right, the word I want to use? Grids, they, uh, they, there's, there's stakes, and they've went out and they've shot those, those things, and they're going to tell you, and each one is going to tell you what it needs to be filled or whether it needs to be cut to get the water from one end of the field to the other. So, you know, we're working, you know, we're, it says cut two feet or, you know, you kind of, we didn't know what we were doing. So, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're cutting away and filling away, and he gets off, and he, he looks down. We call him beige, you know, right? And there was a, a, a cut track down through there, and it looks like this. We're, it's, this is where we're trying to make it level, right? And it, it looks like this. He goes, look at that thing. He goes, you're supposed to be able to take a string line and stretch it from one end to the other, and it should be straight as an arrow. And it looked like, and that's where we've done the work, right? <laughs> No way water was ever going to get from one end to the other. So, and time's just about up. Uh, but we learned to become pretty efficient at leveling land. We learned, we, we would walk around with a transit and uh, what they call a, a rod. And so if you weren't sure what the, how much more needed to be cut, you'd get out of your machine. You'd put the, you'd put the, the rod up on where, how much was going to come off and you'd, you put your uh, the, the or the little tr hand level, and you look through it and you say, "Okay, I got to go down, you know, three more inches or six six inches, right?" And so you just you learned instead of just guessing, you got so you could. And finally, you know, we got good enough that you we didn't need a tr we didn't need those things anymore. You could look, we could look at a two foot cut and knew when it was down to two foot because we just over repetition of time got got good at it. Huh? Months, probably. Yeah. Yeah. We, with Herb throwing dirt clods at us, you got, 
you got good pretty fast. <laughs> he never did hit us, but. Well, we're going to close there. It's about that time of the night. Thank you for coming. We will see you on Sunday. Let's just close in prayer. Father, we thank you for the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Father, we thank you that, that we have positioned ourselves, Father, and that we have become doers of your word, Father, and that we are resting in you, Father, and your faithfulness and your goodness and your blessings have made us rich, and they're adding no sorrow with our lives, Father. We thank you, Father, as we continue to meditate and look into your word, Father, that we are being transformed by the Spirit of the living God into the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, we give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for coming tonight.